So what do you need to know about energy? Well, first, let's make sure you know the difference between energy and power. Power is energy divided by time. So that's how quickly you can take the energy and, and use it, maybe turn it into some useful work. We'll often talk about automobiles in terms of how many horsepower or, or other units of power, of how many watts they can produce. And that's because the more powerful something is, probably the more work it can do very quickly. To give you some relation to the units of energy and power, I have brought in a match and a firecracker. Both of these turn out to have about the same energy content. But clearly, as I like the match, you can watch it burn for quite a few seconds before it burns my fingers, versus the firecracker, which is over like that, or actually much faster than that, the firecracker has more power, even though their energy content is the same. In the US, we still use a unit called the British Thermal Unit. As a scientist, I think the unit of a joule makes a lot more sense. One British Thermal Unit is 1,055 joules. Earlier, we had another unit, the kilocalorie, or the food calorie which are the same. It turns out that there are four BTUs in one kilocalorie, one food calorie. So why do I even talk about the BTU, the amount of energy it takes to raise one pound of water, one degree Fahrenheit? Well, that's because when we go to statistics of large amounts of energy, they're often described in the unit of a quad. A quad is a quadrillion BTUs. That's a 10 to the 15th power, a one with 15 zeros after it, a billion million. So how much energy is just one BTU? Well, that's my match or my firecracker. What about an apple? An apple? 400 BTUs, right? Maybe 100 food calories. It's a nice, juicy, plump apple. To boil a cup of water so you can make tea, that's 500 BTUs. Don't confuse energy and power, because I could put the example of a stick of dynamite versus a piece of wood, or maybe even a loaf of bread, and ask you to compare their energy. Clearly, the dynamite is a lot more powerful. But if you actually look at the energy content, both the loaf of bread and the piece of wood have maybe more than twice as much energy as the stick of dynamite. They just don't have anywhere near that power. I've got a nice graphic here that shows some comparisons of BTUs. Making clothes, going to the moon, the energy used in uh, Texas, the energy used in all of Africa. I think most importantly, the bottom two, which is the energy used by the United States in 2012 and the total amount of energy used in the world in 2012. 95 quads versus 540 quads. If you wanted to use joules, remember one quad, it's called an ecajoule, which would be 10 to the 18th joules, a capital E-J, are approximately the same unit within 5%. It's interesting that the U.S. energy use for the last 15 years, maybe even longer, 20 years, has been hovering in this 95 to 100 range. Even though the population has grown, even though the total amount of goods and services provided, the GDP has grown, this number has still stayed in the 95 to 100 range. This means that the U.S. is getting more efficient at using its energy resources. However, the world's number is going up at a dramatic pace. It's important to understand these types of statistics to be able to understand what we're up against as a planet. If you want everyone to have first world standard of livings, then we're going to need a lot more energy. I want to pick just uh, one other particular country, and that's China. And look at this graph. This is a graph of energy use over time for the world, 
the United States and for China. And you notice that over the last few years, China has overtaken the United States as the world's largest consumer and user of energy. Their number for 2012 was 115 and a half quads. And unlike the U.S., which is flat in its energy use, China's energy use is going up at an extremely fast rate. Now, you could say, oh, this is so terrible. Actually, I think you could say, oh, this is so good. Because with that rise in energy, there's also been a rise in the standard of living of the people of China. The median income has risen. The availability of, of goods and services and products for the 1.2 or so billion people in China has continued to rise and likely will continue to rise for some time since the population of China is roughly four times the population of the United States. If they were both at the same amount of, of energy uh, usage per person, one would imagine that they should have four times the energy use of the United States. Now, efficiencies do set in. When one looks at energy use per person, it's not the whole story. The country with the highest energy use per person in the world is not the U.S., it's Canada. And that's because Canada is cold, or certainly much colder than the average U.S., and the lifestyle and the standard of living and the types of living and the wide dispersion of people across the country, the low population density is very similar to the U.S. in the habitable part of Canada. But even though Canada and the U.S. use a lot of energy per person, the real measure is the amount of goods and services produced, the GDP, if you will, per energy used. That gives you an idea of energy intensity or energy efficiency. And in that type of graph, the U.S. and Canada are more in the middle of the road. The European countries are the most efficient, but the growing countries in the world, the Chinas and Indias, still have quite a bit of efficiency to go to be able to reach the same type of levels. That's good news. All of these places are getting more efficient. They're making more goods and services per unit of energy than they were in previous years. But the curves for Europe are fairly flat. After all, they're already very efficient. The U.S. is getting more efficient, but it's very heartening to see that a country like China is also getting more efficient in its energy use. The countries include Russia and include perhaps the other uh, countries behind the Iron Curtain with a socialized economy history. State-run enterprises, not run for profit motive, can afford to be extreme energy wasters. And while that's no longer true in these countries, the legacy of that is still represented in their infrastructure. And of course, a country like Russia is even colder on average than Canada and even less densely populated. And both of those things contribute to having a large amount of energy for goods and services produced as well. So back to the countries of the world and who uses the most energy. So I've already told you the top two. And they are dramatically far and above the next on the list. China uses the most. U.S. uses the second most. 115 and 95. Number three right now is Russia. It's very close to two other major countries, India and Japan. These countries, Russia, India, Japan, all have energy use in the range of 20 to 30 quads per year. But they represent three very different modes of that energy use. 